So, crematory employee, I see that you've given me this urn with my mom's name on the bottom, but are these really my mother's ashes? I don't blame you for asking this question. One person's cremated remains look, well, pretty much like everyone else's cremated remains. Gray, mulchy, generally uneventful. And it doesn't help that there have been a few horror stories looking at you, Tri-State Crematory. In 2002, Georgia crematory operator Ray Brent Marsh managed to never cremate 339 people he was contracted to cremate. He stacked the bodies in old refrigerators, dumped them in ponds, tossed them in the woods, pretty much everything except cremate them. Instead of ashes, he gave the family back boxes of concrete dust. No. No, 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 no. Now, I'm not usually for more regulation when it comes to death, but I am for regulation for people accepting money for death services, like crematories or funeral homes. They should be frequently inspected and not financially incentivized for shady behavior. So how do we make sure it's really your mom's ashes? This is how identification works in my experience. Every deceased individual that comes into the crematory is well labeled, most recently by computerized barcodes on their cremation container. When it comes time to cremate, the body is assigned a metal disc with a unique number and the name of the crematory. That metal disc stays with the body through the cremation and then ends up in the urn that's given back to the family. That way, if someone's ungrateful children shove them in the back of a closet or something, even if it's 15 years later, you could find the tag, look at the name of the crematory, call them, and from the number, find out who the person in that anonymous urn is. I need a name, Bastion. So with all of the safeguards in place, it's pretty darn likely to be your mom in there, but Two disclaimers on this question. Disclaimer the first. It's going to be the vast majority, your mom, but there's probably gonna be a little bit of somebody else in there too. Just a little bit. This is the language that has to be printed on the cremation authorization form here in California. Cliff Notes version, after the cremation, the bones are either swept or blown out of the cremation chamber. There will be small amounts of residue left over from other cremations, as well as from the ceramic dust of the chamber itself. Those will inevitably be mixed in with your mother's remains. Disclaimer the second. Even if the crematory operator manages to get every single speck of bone out of the cremation chamber, is it really your mother? The super high heat inside the cremation chamber, up to 1000 degrees Celsius, 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, destroys all living material. There's no human tissue, no DNA, only ground inorganic material, primarily calcium phosphate. This is a small bag of my grandmother's ashes. I keep them in my room. I know that they're just non-organic, non-DNA chunks of calcium phosphate, but they're comforting. I like them. So I understand why you want your mother's cremation to be so carefully done. Once a creature of love, a creature of hate, now but a bag of calcium phosphate. Ask a Mortician is brought to you with support from People's Memorial Association and the Co-op Funeral Home, and donations from viewers like you.